delve into the chilling tale of Elizabeth Maud Duncan, a mother consumed by a twisted love for her son, Frank Duncan, in this gripping documentary. Against the backdrop of 1950s California, follow the tragic story of Olga Duncan, a pregnant nurse whose life was cut short by her own mother-in-law's deadly machinations. We unravel the shocking events that unfolded in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties, shaking communities and capturing national attention. From the fateful encounter between Frank Duncan and Olga Kupchik to the harrowing disappearance of the young nurse, explore the sinister web of manipulation, jealousy, and betrayal that led to her tragic demise. Discover how Elizabeth Duncan's relentless harassment and hostility towards her daughter-in-law escalated to a chilling plot to end her life. Follow the gripping courtroom drama as prosecutors unravel the conspiracy, leading to the convictions and subsequent executions of Elizabeth Duncan and her hired hitmen. Join us as we uncover the dark secrets of a forgotten crime that continues to haunt the hearts of those touched by its brutality. Experience the chilling tale of a mother's twisted love and the devastating consequences that reverberated through generations. In 1958, the turbulent saga of Elizabeth Duncan and her daughter-in-law, Olga Kupchik, began with a simple argument between Elizabeth and her son, Frank Duncan. Living together in a Santa Barbara apartment, tensions ran high as Frank insisted that his mother find a new place to live. However, the situation took a dark turn when Elizabeth, distraught by the prospect of leaving her son, overdosed on sleeping pills, prompting a rushed trip to Cottage Hospital for medical attention. During her recovery, among the nurses attending to Elizabeth was Olga Kupchik, a Canadian transplant working at the hospital. Frank and Olga's paths crossed, and their connection blossomed into a relationship. By June of 1958, they were married, with Olga carrying Frank's child. Yet their joyous union was marred by Elizabeth's disapproval, who viewed Olga as unworthy of her son's esteemed career as a defense attorney. The newlyweds faced relentless harassment from Elizabeth, who resorted to phone calls, threats, and even hired help to disrupt their marriage. In a shocking turn of events, Elizabeth orchestrated a fraudulent annulment of Frank's marriage, posing as Olga herself to deceive the courts. Undeterred, Olga hoped that the impending arrival of their child would mend the rift between Frank and his mother. Elizabeth's disdain for Olga escalated into harassment, prompting the couple to relocate multiple times in an attempt to escape her meddling. Frustrated and desperate, Frank eventually moved back in with his mother, hoping to placate her until after the baby's arrival in the hopes of a change of heart. For five months, Frank Duncan spent evenings with Olga while spending nights at home with his mother, Elizabeth Duncan. Throughout this time, Elizabeth, aged 54, relentlessly harassed Olga, often calling her at the hospital where she worked as a nurse or pounding on the apartment door, issuing menacing threats. Despite Olga's attempts to evade her mother-in-law's torment by changing apartments twice, Elizabeth persistently followed Frank, tracking his movements to their rendezvous spots. However, tragedy struck on November 18, 1958, when Olga mysteriously vanished without a trace. Initially dismissed as a runaway bride by law enforcement, the gravity of the situation intensified as Elizabeth's animosity towards Olga came to light. Detectives delving into the disappearance were met with a startling revelation. Elizabeth had been actively seeking someone to eliminate her daughter-in-law. Emma Short, Elizabeth's 80-year-old confidant and constant companion, inadvertently exposed Elizabeth's sinister intentions. The revelation of Elizabeth's plot unfolded as prosecutors pieced together a damning case against her. Offering two hitmen dollars six thousand to carry out the murder, Elizabeth's scheme unraveled when she failed to produce proper documentation for her son's funds. Forced to concoct a false narrative of extortion, her attempt to deflect suspicion only led to the arrest of the hitmen and the grim discovery of Olga's lifeless body. 
In mid-August, Elizabeth managed to locate Olga's apartment and gained access in her absence, apparently to ascertain if any of Frank's belongings were present. She's not going to have him, Elizabeth declared to the apartment manager. I will kill her if it's the last thing I do. It was a chilling statement, reflecting her determination to eliminate Olga by any means necessary. Seeking assistance, Elizabeth confided in Diane Romero, whose husband Rudolph was one of Frank's clients. Claiming that Olga was blackmailing Frank, Elizabeth urged Diane to assist in removing Olga from the picture. Diane visited Olga's apartment under Elizabeth's direction, but left without taking any action after recognizing Olga as a former nurse who had cared for her. Undeterred, Elizabeth continued her quest for someone to get rid of Olga. She approached Rebecca Diaz, who lived in the same house as the Romeros, and spun a tale of Olga's threats and demands for money. Diaz agreed to notify Elizabeth if she came across anyone willing to assist. On November 12, 1958, Elizabeth, accompanied by Emma Short, visited the Tropical Café in Santa Barbara. There, she confided in Esperanza Esquivel, the café's owner, alleging that Olga was blackmailing her and had threatened Frank. Elizabeth sought Esquivel's help in finding individuals willing to eliminate Olga. Esquivel mentioned the possibility of some boys, but was uncertain about their willingness to engage. The following day, Elizabeth returned to the café with Emma Short and was introduced to Luis Moya and Gus Baldonado. Elizabeth spun a tale of Olga's blackmail and expressed her desire to eliminate her. After negotiations, Elizabeth agreed to pay Moya and Baldonado $3,000 up front and another $3,000 upon completion of the job. In a fateful meeting at the cantina, the plan to kidnap Olga and take her to Tijuana for execution took shape. Elizabeth left briefly and returned to the kitchen with Moya, where she handed him $1.175 obtained by pawning some rings. As they left, Elizabeth expressed her belief that the plan would succeed. Moya and Baldonado, both with criminal backgrounds, executed the plan on the evening of November 17, 1958. Pretending to be frank, Baldonado lured Olga into their car, where Moya struck her unconscious. They then drove to a secluded spot, where they brutally murdered her before burying her body in a shallow grave. After the deed was done, Elizabeth made payments to Moya and Baldonado, using funds obtained through dubious means. However, suspicions arose when Frank questioned her about a check he had given her. Frank's concerns led to an investigation, resulting in the arrest of Moya and Baldonado. Despite her denial of involvement during her trial, Elizabeth, Moya, and Baldonado were all found guilty and sentenced to death. You bet I would, was Elizabeth Duncan's response, when a prison guard asked if she'd commit the crime again, knowing its consequences. Nobody is going to have my son. On August 8, 1962, Moya and Baldonado were executed in California's gas chamber. As Elizabeth entered the chamber shortly after, her last words echoed a haunting question. Where's Frank? <laughs>